excited and um you know nerves anxiousness all day long with from top to bottom of the program um so happy for these players uh you know thanking thank thankful for the selection committee to um, respect what we did our body of work our non-conference scheduling to that conference um it's it's just an unbelievable moment that i'm so grateful to have the opportunity to share with the the young ladies and my staff and this university for what we what we've accomplished and you know just super excited to play a, a team like oklahoma state and, and and you know see what we can do jen i wanted to ask you um this is your ninth season and and this is only the second time in history for wake forest getting to the tournament why do you think that's been the case i know You've been here nine years and you went as a player. I mean, is there anything that maybe you can pinpoint or why do you think it's been such a big, uh, you know, big gap? Well, I think I think in women's basketball, like the parity is becoming more and more every year. Um, I think there was a big gap between the haves and the have nots for a long time in this game. And a lot of the top players always kind of went to the same places. And, you know, I think anytime you're going to try to build sustainable success, and do it the right way without with integrity and, and and without compromising anything you have to start at the foundation and to build it from the from the bottom up and i think some of the things that we've had happen here at wake forest in the recent years with the amazing facilities we have the commitment to um, our academics have always spoken for themselves but now we have some of the top facilities if not the most beautiful weight room in the country like now we have some of that buzz factor that you have to have with this day and age, with this, with the top athletes and the top student athletes that you want to come represent your university. And, and you know, and it's, it's, there's a lot of great players and there's a lot of great teams and some phenomenal coaches across this country. And when you come to play in the ACC, you've got to bring your game every single night. And so you got to learn to win and, and then you've got to be able to be consistent and be able to take that on the road. And that's one of the hardest things to do in most of most conferences is who can win on the road. And what does that look like? And, you know, in a, in a COVID year where there were so many things that were so different, I couldn't be more proud of our team because we've, knock on wood, have, have not had to cancel or postpone or quarantine or anything like that because of our commitment to it. So, you know, just super excited for this. And coach, I know this is something I've talked a lot about with you, um, but what does it mean to return back to March Madness for the first time for Wake Forest since you were playing on the team? Uh, it's an unbelievable feeling uh, because I, I I remember what it was like as a player and I've been at some some great institutions as an assistant and, and gone through selection shows and you know as nervous as we all were up there it's exactly what we wanted it's exactly where we want to be it's you know we want to be in this situation year in and year out and you know I it, there's not you can't explain it until you're in it and you know these young ladies now have had that once in a lifetime opportunity and and now you know, to kind of settle in and, and be able to relax and know who our next opponent is. And it's, you know, an Oklahoma State, who's a phenomenal team. And, you know, now we know, and now as coaches and players, we can start planning and, and you know, but that, in, that, in, that emotion of just the pure ju jubilation, if you will, for, for what we were able to accomplish and, and to, be, to, be, to be here, so. And Jen, were you a freshman or a sophomore in 88? I was a freshman, freshman, freshman. that year. And have you showed? The girls, the winning shot, I think, in that first game, or is... I have not. I don't know if we have it on film. I, I'll tell you, it was a baseline out of bounds, and I was wide open. So I guess somebody thought I couldn't score at all. But <laughs> if I'd have blown that layup, I don't know if I'd have ever lived it down. But it was a, uh, uh, I think Alice Neal threw the ball in bounds, if I remember correctly. And we were up at Villanova and, and came away with, a, I think, a one point lead on that shot at the buzzer, basically out of bounds play, and then went down to Tennessee and got beat by the Volunteers, who ended up winning the tournament that year. So well, I, that was when I, they only took 32 teams. Well, I have I have seen some footage and it's it's color, so that's good. <laughs> nice, yeah. Thanks, I appreciate that. <laughs> Coach, as time went on tonight and we got a little bit deeper into the show, was there ever any concern that maybe y'all were going to be left out? Well, I think they're always in the back of our minds. I mean, we've been talking from the time we left that court against Louisville in the ACC tournament that we believed we were in. And we practiced last week and, you know, we kept practices pretty short and re really competitive and stayed in game shape. And, but we kept constantly talking about we're in now we had, you know, all of us staff to players were watching every game that was happening. And what if this upset occurs? And, you know, we were on the edge of our seats for that BYU Gonzaga game. And then 
the whole thing with the MVC, the Missouri Valley Conference. And, you know, we were very familiar with the Missouri State program and team from our win against them early in the season. And so, you know, it, it was, it's, it's just nerve wracking. I mean, I kept telling them, you know, you know, we saw Carolina get in and some of the, some of the other people in the conference and you start to get antsy, but there were still two regions to go. Um, and, and, you know, we were a little surprised. We came as early, it was as early as it was because we were kind of thinking we were probably going to be a 10 or 11 seed and then to pull off a nine seed. So again, just really ex super excited for this group. Hey Jen, does, does getting a nine seed kind of show a, a little bit of the validation that the committee uh, valued your body of work this season? Yeah, and that's where, I mean, I, again, I think, you know, the committee, they always do a phenomenal job and I don't know how they do their, their job because it's such a hard, when you look at the, all the teams across this country, there's some great basketball teams out there. And, you know, I don't envy them at all, but they do a great job kind of going through it. And, and I really felt like it did. You know, you always try to figure out as a coach, what is it going to take? You know, the ACC speaks for itself, but what is it going to take? And, you know, I go back to our very first, you know, when we found out the season was going to start two weeks late and our first four games were not going to be played because of it, you know, we were a little bit, oh my gosh, we're going to Florida and we're playing back to back to back for the first three games of the season. And two of them are against top 25 programs. You know, is that really smart with COVID and everything else? And, you know, and the administration from, from our athletic director, John Curry down was like, you know, let's do it, let's go. And, and the kids were the same way. We knew this was a special group and I wanted to challenge them from day one because part of my job as a, as a coach and our staff is to set them up for success. And that means challenging them with those schedules that set us, put us in a position to be able to sit here today. Um, and I think our non-conference scheduling was very instrumental, not only in challenging them, but also preparing us for our conference season and being able to go on the road and turn scouting reports around quickly. And then the ACC tournament, that's all prepared us for what we're getting ready to go experience in, in Texas in, in, in the NCAA tournament. Jen, sometime. Jen, I want to ask you about Jewel a little bit. She's, okay. out, uh, she's obviously one for one going to the ACC tournament you know, since she's a freshman, but we talk a lot about your two seniors, but how much has she kind of meant to you guys this year in getting to this NCAA? Well, I think she's been critical. She's a one piece to the puzzle for us. And, and one of the things that we've done as a staff is really tried to kind of pull it, bring in the pieces that we feel like will will fit together and, and make this group special. And, you know, I think for what she's been able to do and, and is kind of as poised and as she is, you know, sometimes I think we might forget she's even a freshman. So, um, you know, just that other scoring threat, the, 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 the deep ball threat that she has always, but she can score in a variety of ways and she really doesn't force things. She lets the game come to her. And, um, and I think she just has gotten better and better and more comfortable as the season's gone, gone on and what's expected. And, and her whole thing in coming here was to be part of a, a team that does it, that makes that major impact and makes the chance, makes the jump and not go somewhere that was already there. And, you know, now she can say she's a part of that. All these kids can, we've got a lot of, a lot of great kids that are even behind the scenes, but I, I do think that's a big part of it. Hey, Jen, as, as human beings, sometimes it's difficult to work through periods of uncertainty. Right. In the last week to 10 days, you all have kind of been hanging in the, in the wings trying to figure out what's going to happen. It, it has, how's the work ethic been? And if it's been good, do you kind of credit your seniors for kind of keeping that on track? Uh, I think the work ethic has been really good. I, I, you know, I have to credit, I, I would say, our upperclassmen and, uh, and my staff for just, you know, we got together and said, like, you know, what, what is our plan? And, and we were kind of doing that before we even left Greensboro. And we knew we wanted to practice, um, keep them in game shape, keep them fresh, but we wanted to kind of keep it short and, you know, make sure it was fun. Um, a competitive fun, but so we, you know, and I, and I think the kids on the court, like every day in practice, they brought an energy and excitement about still playing. And part of that's what the, when you dangle the NCAA out there, that brings that excitement. And this group had the excitement of thinking they were going to play in postseason last year and it getting, you know, ripped from everybody when we came back and COVID hit. So, you know, I give a lot of credit to both, our, you know, our, our seniors definitely. And then also just the staff really being conscious of, how do we make this fun? How do we keep them competing against each other? And, you know, we practiced Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we took Thursday off and then we went Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, we kind of had a fun competitive shooting day where we had groups challenging each other to shooting competitions and team competitions and really just something light because everyone at that point was really kind of anxious and nervous. And we were just trying to get our minds off of it completely. 
and Jim, then and Jim, and Jim, what's it like to kind of cap off the careers of Gina and Ivana with, you know, playing on the biggest stage that there is in college basketball? How special is that for them and, and to, to you to kind of help lead them to that moment? Well, I, 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 there's nothing, there's nothing more special, I think, than having this opportunity. And especially when you're talking about, you know, a senior class with those two and Maya Banks, who bless her heart, had a tough year with her having her knee surgery and stuff. But for everything they came here to do, like this is a dream come true for these kids. And it definitely part of why I recruited them and why I brought them here was selling them on this exact dream. And if we dream it, we believe it, we can achieve it. And to sit here tonight with them and be able to say, we did it. Like we did it, but we're not happy with that. We still want, we want to go. We don't want to just make it to the tournament. I've said this from day one. We want to be ready and, and go with the intention of, of winning when we get there. And so I'm just so happy. These kids have put a lot, poured a lot in four years flies by, but at the same time, there, that's a lot of sweat equity that they've put in. And, you know, it's, it's, they've had a lot of teammates who've come through that they've had to take under their wings and kind of show the way. And in a most difficult year of any of our lives, I would say with what we've gone through and experienced with COVID and not being able to do some of the normal team building activities we've had an opportunity to do, it's just been a real challenge, but they've embraced it. Do you kind of consider this, this run a chance to uh, give thanks to the ones that have come before this group too? I saw Dierica Hamby, for instance, tweet that she's crying, you know, about this. You know, and you think about all the all the great players that have come through, and now they get a chance to see this finally come to fruition. Yeah, I think that this group feels a little bit of that. They feel a responsibility for all the alumni that have come here before and, and wanted to, to be a part of the group to do it and have come close but not been able to kind of get over the hump. Um, you know, we've, we, we had quite a few injuries in some years that I thought were probably going to be some of our bigger, better years. And, you know, and, and, and part of being successful at this level is being able to sustain and not have those kind of key injuries. And, and I will give a lot of credit to our strength coach, Jenna Reddy. She is a rock star. Um, she's been with me now for uh, three years, I guess. And, and she just like her and our, and our athletic trainer, Scott Spernoga, who's been with me since I got here, have done a phenomenal job with working on these kids to help us stay healthy and you know, I, I think there's there's a lot of players out there from Dierica to La China to I have former teammates that played and my phone is blown up like crazy. Um, it just means so much to all of us to know they've been behind us and cheering for us just as loud as ever. And and like this is part of this is for them, too. It is like there's a lot of Deacon Pride, you know, in this group. And and I definitely think that they know that and we've really embraced them and made them feel a part of it as much as we possibly can. So. And coach, I know how important uh, it is for y'all to continue on into the tournament, but would you say turn point for this program? Sorry, can you repeat that? I, it broke up for a second. Uh, I'm sorry. I know how important it is for y'all to continue um, on in the tournament, but would you say that tonight is a big turning point for the program? Well, this is a huge, huge step for this program. It's, it's what we, we want to be. I was telling the kids afterwards, like you want to be sitting there, like just nervous about where you're going and who you're playing, not nervous about, are you in or not? And you know, this group, this was a step in that direction. Like you don't go from zero to a hundred without some steps in that building process. And I do think this is a huge step for this program. Um, you know, these kids and, and the players that have come before just to have the ability now to hang another hang a banner in that in that Coliseum that has gotten that monkey off our back, if you will. Um, you know, now it's no longer the longest drought from the NCAA tournament. Now, like we're in no one can take that from us. It's something that every one of these kids will be able to tell their stories to their children when they become coaches they're, they'll be able to tell their teams and you know, it's it, that that's the part that makes this so special is these the, these young ladies we get to share it with. Coach, um, uh, I know you probably haven't had a ton of time to look at film yet in, uh, you know, this 20 or 30 minutes since the announcement, but I'm sure you've watched your share fair of college ball around the country right. this season. Um, what, what do you think Oklahoma State and how you guys match up? Well, you know, I know that uh, Jim Littell has been there many years uh, and he's done a great job. Uh, you know, they, they were like number three seed in their tournament. Natasha Mack is uh, kind of a double-double machine for them. And, you know, it'll be a big matchup for us inside. And, um, and then they've got, you know, they've got a great three-point shooter out on the perimeter as well. 
So, you know, I, I, it'll be a great matchup. We'll, we'll, the assistant coach is already back in the office, breaking down film and watching it and getting it ready for me to kind of head back there after I finish this. Um, you know, at this point in the season, you know, anything can happen. You just got to get prepared and how quickly you can get prepared. And, you know, I, I respect what Coach Littell has done there with that program for many years. Um, he was an assistant coach there when the, the, the faithful um, plane crash with the head coach, Bud Key, and the other assistant were on. And, and, you know, I, I knew some of them and we had a staff member here was good friends with those guys as well. So there's, it's a program I've always kind of followed a little bit from a distance just because of kind of the history of what happened there and what's going on. Um, and so it'll be a great, great challenge for us. It'll be a great matchup. You know, it's, you know, anytime you can have a couple of power five conferences match up and, and see where we stand. I think that's a, you know, something we want to go represent the ACC as well and as, as good as we possibly can. Anything else for coach?